Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service here from Strathblane Parish Church of Scotland. Good to have you join us for our service today. Our Bible reading today is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. So if you have your Bibles uh, available, please take them out and read along with me. From Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Paul says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp a wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And may God bless to us this reading from his own holy word. Have you ever wondered, as I have wondered, why it's so hard to live up to what God wants us to be, to live up to God's expectations of us? It can at times really be hard to follow God. We sometimes struggle. And it may be hard for us because we don't really fully grasp or understand how much God loves each one of us and how concerned he is about each one of us. Consider the example of a rebellious teenager. You tell them to be home at a certain time, say 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and they say, yes, I'll be home at that time. I promise I'll be home. But the time comes, 10 o'clock comes, 11 o'clock comes, and still they are not home. You're worried, you're anxious, and they don't fully understand why you're so anxious. What they at times fail to grasp is how much you really love them, how deep your love and your concern for them really is. How you want what's best for them, and every thought is a thought about their well-being. If that is true of our relationship with each other as family members, maybe also it's true of our relationship with God. So today, we're going to focus in on an impossible task, getting our hands, our hearts, our minds around God's love, trying to grasp its measure, something very difficult to do, impossible to do, ultimately. We're going to try and understand the height, the length, the breadth, the depth of God's love for each one of his children. Paul has already told us it's impossible to do because he describes God's love in verse 19 as this love that surpasses knowledge. No matter how hard you try, we won't understand it fully. But he prays in verse 18 that we might grasp more of it. In other words, we continue to make an attempt, an effort to grasp something of how great God's love is for each one of us. So let's try and grasp, lay hold of with our minds and our hearts, something of uh, how wonderful God's love is for each one of us, how wide and long and high and deep it is. So let's focus in on each one of those words as we try to wrap our hands and our hearts and our minds around the love of God for us. First of all, God's love is wide, says the apostle. When I think about God's love being wide, I think of it as being all-encompassing and all-embracing. It seems to be limitless. God has enough love for you and for me. He has enough love for your neighbor, and enough love uh, can reach to someone on the other side of our planet, our world. It reaches every corner of the earth. It reaches the poor and the rich alike. No one is excluded. Even that family member who fails us and lets us down, a brother or sister, a son or daughter, whoever it might be, someone who fails us in so many ways causes us trouble and heartache. God's love reaches them. No one is left out. It's wide enough to cover everybody. 
And that's what Second Peter reminds us of, where Peter says in chapter 3, "'The Lord is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance.'" God is patient with us. He has a desire, a yearning that all may come to repentance and faith in him. That's why he is waiting before sending Jesus back to come in judgment of all the world to bring all things to an end. He is patient with each one of us. God wants everyone to come to the Creator who has given them life, to know God, their Heavenly Father. John 3.16 reminds us of this also. It says, begins there in John 3.16 by saying, For God so loved the world. In other words, God's love is extended to everyone. That's the way John reminds us of that. Not everyone loves God in response to his love, but God nevertheless reaches out to everyone. His love is wide. And Paul wants us to think on this and try and grasp how wide God's love is. And we know, perhaps, that God loves everyone, but do we also know that God loves us, you, and I, in an all-encompassing way too? That means he loves us despite our failures, our, our many ways in which we fail to do all he calls us to do, our sins, our transgressions, all the wrongs we do, despite all our faults. Romans 5, verse 8, reminds us of that. It says there, God demonstrates his own love for us in this way. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's hard to take in that Christ Jesus loved us and gave his life for us. When we had no thought of him and had no love in our hearts for him and wanted perhaps little to do with him, yet he loved us as we were in that way. We don't need to clean ourselves up before we come to God. We come just as we are. That's what the hymn writer says, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. We come just as we are, not cleaning ourselves up, but simply being who we are, being honest with God as we come. He already knows our deepest and our darkest secrets, and yet he is still ready and willing to love us. And if God loves all people, despite all their, their errors and their sins and their flaws and faults, just like all of us have them, then we too should love others, despite all their flaws and their faults. Love people because they carry the image of God. Love people because God loves them. And Paul reminds us that God's love is wide. Grasp it with your mind and your heart, he says. Try and grasp how wide it is. And then secondly, God's love is long. God can see and love long range. He loves in this life, and he loves beyond this life into eternity. His love stretches from the very beginning to the very end of all, of, of all things, all creation and beyond that into the new creation of the new heavens and the new earth. His love knows no end. It's long. God knows how things turn out in the end, but you and I, we don't. All we see and feel is short range. Our feelings go up and down. They vary from day to day. When we are up, we are up. When we are down, we are down. We are nearsighted. But God is farsighted. God sees the beginning and the end of all things. God's love permeates your whole being from beginning to the very end. Your Creator was there when you were born, and He will be there with you when you die. From beginning to end, in the middle, and beyond death into eternity, God's love is there. You cannot escape God's love. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else, nor creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
In other words, God, God's love is waiting for us at the beginning of every single road and every single experience. And his love is waiting for us at the end of every road and every single experience. You can put in, uh, you can put in there these experiences, illness, stress, isolation, lockdown, coronavirus, or failure, our faults. God's love is with us through everything, at the beginning, in the middle, and until the end of everything. Your future is secure in God's love. His love is long-sighted enough to keep on loving you through your failures, long-sighted enough to keep on loving you through coronavirus, lockdown, and fears, and cancer, and illness, and troubles, and heartache, and all kinds of fail failures in life. So trust your future to the one who holds the future. You don't need to worry about what's going to happen because God holds you in his loving arms and hands at all times. When you trust your future into God's keeping and God's long love for us, love that endures, you can begin to enjoy life today. Yes, you will still have to make plans and decisions and choices, but if you sub submit all your plans to the Lord, then uh, he will keep you and carry you through. The hymn writer said, I know who holds the future, I know he holds my hand. With God, things don't just happen. Everything by him is planned. So as I face tomorrow with its problems, large and small, I trust the God of miracles, give to him my all. God's love is wide and is long and long-lasting and enduring and will be with us from this day forth, throughout this day, to the end of our journey, beyond this journey, into eternity, into the glory that awaits us. It's long, long-sighted. When troubles arise in our lives, when someone causes us pain, we're ready not to love them. But God isn't like that. His love is long and continues and is unceasing. And it's also, says the apostle, not only wide and long, but he also says, thirdly, that God's love is high. It's higher than we will ever comprehend or grasp or understand. When I think of God's love being high, I think of Psalm 103, verse 11, which says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. God's love is high as the heavens. Scientists have determined that we can see out into outer space to about 45 billion light years. But the heavens are even higher than that and more distant than that. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God knows things we do not know. God understands things that we do not understand. God is not bound by our logic or human reason or human intellect. God's love is higher than you are, or I or anyone else will ever comprehend or understand. What does that mean for us today? It means that Father knows best. Our Heavenly Father knows what is best for us and for our world. Can I trust God even when I do not, do not understand what he is doing? Can I trust God that he knows what he's doing during this period of coronavirus? His wisdom isn't always clear to us. His wisdom doesn't always make sense to us. We wrestle, we, we grapple with it, trying to understand what on earth is God doing. But his wisdom is higher than ours. His knowledge is higher than ours. He sees longer than we see. His plans are longer than our plans. His foresight, much greater than our foresight. Think of the young, timid judge in the Old Testament named Gideon. God raised him up to become a great leader and prepared him for battle. 
initially with thousands of troops by his side, but step by step, God whittled down the size of his army until there was only 300 brave souls left to fight against thousands who were in the enemy camp. All because, all of this was done because one, God wanted to show everyone that it is God himself who gives the victory, and that it was God himself who gave the victory on that day. We have a propensity, we have a, a, a way of doing things that makes us rely on education, rely on leaders, rely on scientists, and all of these things are good, and we need to rely on the ability of men and women around us. But at the end of the day, God wants us to know that he is the one we rely on. Our Father knows best. We can trust our Heavenly Father. His wisdom is higher than our highest wisdom. His insight higher than the highest insight. And so if we read God's Word, and if we follow God's Word, and if we obey God's Word, and the leading of His Holy Spirit, and stay near to Jesus, and continue to serve Him, even when we do not understand what is going on, God will be with us. And God will take us through. The thing that we need to remind ourselves of constantly, each and every day, each and every morning, is this. Father knows best. God knows best. God knows what he is doing. His ways are higher than our ways. And he knows what he is doing with his world. And lastly, God's love is deep. The words uh, today remind us, or these words remind us, Remind me of the old children's hymn, Deep and Wide, Deep and Wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. A, fl a fountain flowing that opened up at Calvary, where God made known to us how deeply he does love us. Jesus bled and died to save us, and the fountain opened up at Calvary. A fountain filled with blood reminds us constantly of God's love for a fallen world and a needy world and for each one of us. Is there anything a God who would not love us so deeply will not do for us? When I think about God's love being deep, I think of how his love can be completely satisfying, can bring us a measure of satisfaction, a measure of peace, a measure of hope in life's difficult circumstances. God's love can make up for the rejection of others. Others may reject me, others may despise me, but God's love is constant. The love of Calvary, the fountain of Calvary, is deep. A love so deep it will never forsake me nor abandon me. God's love can feed our lonely souls. I am all alone. Others may abandon me, but can Jesus, or would he ever abandon me? Of course not. God's love can fill the overwhelming heartache and sorrow we feel when loved ones are taken from us. His love holds them still. It is eternal. From the beginning of the road, from the beginning of a journey, through the journey to the end of the, birth, the journey and into eternity, God's love is constant. The Apostle Paul put it another way, now, now abideth faith, hope, and love, or charity, but the greatest of these is love, because love endures, love lasts forever into eternity itself. Will he let us go? Will he forsake those whom we have lost? Will he abandon them? Does he lose them? No. When we lose sight of loved ones, it is easy for us, perhaps, at times to, in, in some small way, forget them. But God never forgets. God never moves on in that sense, in the sense of abandoning. And so he holds all our loved ones who believe in him in his own hands. And he loves them in a long way. Long, long, long way. God's love can bring us purpose and vitality and energy when we have aches and pains and old age and illness strike us. God's love can, keep, can encourage us to keep on going, even as Jesus endured the difficulties of his own road. 
God's love is deep. St. Augustine wrote in his journal these words, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Blaise Pascal put it differently. He wrote about mankind. He said, Mankind tries in vain to fill with everything around him, seeking in things that are not there, the help that cannot the help he cannot find in those that are. Though none can help, since this infinite abyss can be filled only with an infinite and immutable object, in other words, by God himself. End of quotes. God alone can satisfy our deepest need. We seek to fill our deepest need and longing with those things that are imagined and made up or the things that we see, and the things that we see fail us so often. But God's love never fails us. Man's deepest need, woman's deepest need, a person's deepest need, is to find the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ. It fills the abyss, the emptiness inside. God alone can satisfy our deepest needs. If this is true, then consider that every temptation Satan throws our way draws on a legitimate human need. He uses our needs, our, our difficulties in life, our striving in life. The temptation is simply to fulfill uh, it in a way that God did not intend. The devil uses or offers us the wrong thing to fill our innermost needs. Gossip substitutes for healthy self-esteem. The self-esteem that comes from knowing that we are a child of God. Greed substitutes for, for the fulfillment that we find in Christ. I want more and more things, but what my heart really longs for and needs is Christ himself. Uncontrolled anger substitutes for healthy conflict resolutions. It's easier to be angry at people than to, to try and understand them and get along with them. Satan offers cheap substitutes that never quite deliver. God, on the other hand, offers ultimate fulfillment. When Paul wrote today's passage, maybe he had in mind one of Job's friend, friends. In Job 11, verse 7, Zophar asked Job, can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than the heavens above. What can you do? They are deeper than the depths below. What can you know? Their measure is longer than the earth is, than the earth and wider than the sea. And at the end of the book of Job, when Job had not received an answer as to why he lost his self, his wealth and his loved ones, the answer he did get was, I am God, and you are not. I will take care of you. I will see you through. And, get, and God did, of course, three, see uh, Job through. Sometimes we simply have to rest in a love that is beyond our understanding, beyond our grasp, to fully know it. We can try to grasp it, but we only get it in part. And that's okay. That's enough. Know that God's love for you is greater than you will ever understand in this lifetime. And let that love propel you forward, secure in his arms as you live for him, by him, and through him. May the Lord bless to us these thoughts in his word. Amen. So we pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, which goes beyond our ability to comprehend and understand it. We cannot get our minds, our hands, our arms, our hearts around. How vast, how all-encompassing, all-embracing, how wonderful, how never-ending that love is. Help us to grasp in just a small way today a little bit more of how wonderful your love is. As we ponder how much you 
truly do love us, despite all our sins and all our failings, all the ways in which we let you down. Help us to grow closer to you and to love you more than our sin. Help someone today to accept your love for the very first time, seeing you, seeing your love revealed through our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for us. No sacrifice too great for love of us. He died for us, bore our sins. He rose again, triumphant over death in the grave. He offers us a relationship with our loving Father in heaven, which will last throughout all of time and beyond that into all of eternity. May we find our rest and our peace in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service today. May God's grace, mercy, and his peace be with you today and into the week ahead. Amen.